and you know he just prefers them over like slower floaty matchups because they allow him to employ his uh, super technical pressuring game plan. Uh, so the the repeat is very much so possible, but we'll see because Cody's on fire right now. Yeah, very true. Forgot that these guys did play earlier. And uh, man, Bobby had a great set against Ginger. Like even though he lost, it was last stock three games in a row. I mean, granted, I think Ginger threw a stock in one of them, but uh, you know, as long as he can clean up a few things and just remember all the the key pieces of info he used to beat IBDW the first time then we could see the upset happen twice uh certainly possible bobby's been on a pretty meteoric rise in melee as well yeah absolutely and he starts off game one nicely uh with a down air on the ground floor leading into 70 percent now Right, got a couple twitches right there in the display, but I think we're back to smooth sailing. Oh, Bobby looking for that backer could have been so huge, but clean recovery from IBDW and finds the backer of his own, claiming that first stock. Yeah, and even though I didn't see the first step between these guys, I'm sure IBDW picked up the fact that Bobby loves to side B. Bobby never up B's, honestly. Um, and that's why that preemptive backer was placed just to finish off Bobby's, uh, Bobby's first stock. Percent starting to accumulate here. Ooh, tips him with the nair. Just pushing him a little bit to the corner. But Bobby's gonna slip on by. Oh, and, and that gets cornered again. No, yeah, that's a really good way to escape the corner as Falco is to just hold hop because it goes to the it goes to the same height as the battlefield top platform, and then you can just side B ledge cancel. It's actually a pretty consistent low execution way to get out of the corner. But right now, Bobby, ah oh man, this game, yeah, that game just went fell out of his hands uh, ever since he messed up that first edge guard. Just going to concede the last stock there, but you know what? I think, like, a lot of people misread, like, the intentions behind that. Like, I think it's good to not show too much of your hand, not show, like, what options you're going to pick when you're desperate and you're down one stock to four, you know? Because you might need to save that for the elimination round, right? Like, you, you might need to keep everything in your pocket for the bitter end and use that to win. I think, um... That might have made more sense if Bobby was like, if his tournament, if his tournament life was in a safer place. But right now, he's very much so staring down the barrel of elimination. I don't think uh, he can afford to really hide his trump cards. I think he needs to put it out all on the table right now and uh, try to take a few games because he's lost four in a row right now, from what we've commentated. Yeah, that's very true. And you know what? You could also just kind of like dial it back a little bit, not go super hard for that last stock, and download a little bit more info on your opponent. So yeah, either way, you know, you still do want more time on the screen. But I can sympathize with the reason for doing it. <laughs> I think Bobby really just needs to close out some of these kills. I mean, pretty much the way that he found himself in losing situations in both the Ginger set as well as this set is he had he had the space he's off stage and he missed very very easy edge guards and you know you can't afford to do that because you're letting these players live at like 150 percent and then they're taking that stock to the bank you know taking like an, another entire stock off of you with it it could have it could have just gone so differently for bobby had he finished some of those stocks off we're oh, gonna get the bear okay keeping it close bobby definitely showing up much better in this match Oh, the nice shine call though, and then he follows him. Yeah, great. Yeah, he follows him straight to the ground floor, and then he reads the tech chase as well. So he got him to nearly 50%. IBDW with that get out of jail shine right there, though. Shaking things up, getting a little percent on the board for himself, and now platform tech chase. Not ready for that side B, though. Dude, like I said, Bobby's always going to side B. It's just a matter of when and where. If it's not, <laughs> if it's not up, if it's not like all the way up, he's going to do a short into the ledge. It's really rare that he up B's. Although he did just there. Oh, clean call out there by IBDW, placing that falling back air right in his path. I think Bobby was a little bit off the perfect deck, not on the perfect line. Yeah. Right, clutch get up attack there from IBDW, but this is still anybody's game. Yeah, Bobby needs this one, otherwise uh, it's pretty much curtains for his, uh, his run this tournament. You know, going going up three in a row, winning three in a row, I should say, against a player of IBW's caliber. 
it's just super unlikely after dro after dropping five games at that point. Yeah, exactly. Got to take a little bit of the wind out of your sails to see that. Oh, and the tournament winner going unpunished. And one from Bobby. That time he got hit. Oh, slipping around. I love the shine turnaround. Uh, wave land off. Fair, but yeah, just didn't do anything. Bobby got caught trying to do Shine Out of Shield. It's actually pretty easy for Fox to play around Falco Shine Out of Shield because the five jump squad is just so much. Um, it feels like really the only thing that Falco's ever going to be able to Shine Out of Shield is Fox's down air because that's the most negative um, move that he's realistically going to hit you with. Well, both players is really clean play yeah. in the last 30 seconds, but man, it's going to be IBDW just hogging the ledge and taking it. Long overdue that he just chose to stay on the ledge because Bobby was getting to a point where all of his recoveries were um, fast falling to the ledge height and then doing a short in. So, you know, you've just got to call that out because it doesn't actually have a hitbox when you do the, short, the shortest short in of um, spacey side B. So there's nothing to fear. If you just really know that your opponent's going to do that, you got to throw those hard reads in. And uh, that's what Cody did. All right, Bobby shrinking the borders a little bit here for Yoshi's story in the potentially final game of this set. It's going to get him some early kills, a little bit better uh, smothering pressure game, but of course, Fox does quite well here too with the low ceiling. Yeah, I'm sure he wanted the down air there. That would have killed Cody, but uh, he was slightly out of range, so he had to opt for the forward air. Uh, that was a really nice ledge dash up to it. And yeah, the lunging aerial is going to finish that one off. Laser for laser for, for swag, and he's off the stock right now. Ooh, and the shine just putting him right at that height where Bobby's so tempted to go for the quick side beat a ledge. Yeah. And at this point, IBDW is just all over it. Yeah, IBDW right now, uh, employing his back air heavy, heavy play style. Um, you'll probably see this play style change up as soon as Falco reaches uh, roughly 40. You know, once more of Fox's moves will start to tumble. But at this percent, Falco is just really looking for like a crouch cancel shine to get things started. And uh, Cody knows that. So that's why he's playing this way. It was such a good falling laser from Bobby. Kind of set him up for greatness there. Even though it didn't directly get him the kill, it still put IBDW in an uncomfortable spot. And Bobby was able to pick that up. Looking for the shine bear, too, off the up throw. Uh, that actually, I think, cost IBDW an important edge guard setup. Yeah, Falco has a really hard time getting out of his shield uh, because the jump squat hurts his ability to wave dash out of shield as well. It feels like uh, Falco got, Bobby got stuck in his shield quite a few times on that last stop just now, and Cody was able to dance around it and really never let him reset to neutral. Yeah, this is, uh, man, that's the turning point in this game. That was what, that was the opening Cody needed, because he's been on the back foot for most of this, but uh, he might have just sealed the deal. The shy 2-H KO, man. Not what you want to be seeing when you're facing elimination here. Okay, but Bobby with another chance here. Okay, excellent laser. But a, a really good angle there from IBDW, just kind of throwing Bobby off center. <gasps> Nice down air. Yeah, he, he read the short hop, and that down air will go through the Yoshi Story side platform. Oh no! That knockdown was crucial! On oh, IBDW, ready for it yet again, though. Uh, just being a little ambitious with the shine into Bear when he could have just gotten Bear. Still in a really good position. He's just one back air away from. Uh, Knocking Bobby out of Gobble 2020. Oh, no tech. That's it. Up throw at like 90 to 100 will uh, pop them up perfectly for the Yoshi Story top platform. And from there, it's an easy up air. Right. Yeah, another 3 0, man. Uh, some of the sets before top eight were a lot more back and forth. And I mean, we started things off with a very long set between IBDW and HBOX, but since then, I think it's actually been all three O's, right? SFAT, Sue Saint, Spark, None, uh, Ginger, Bobby, and now IBDW, Bobby, all shutouts. Yeah, and we're really seeing the players who you would expect to come out on top of these sets on like on like a normal day come out on top with the exception of IBDW over Hungrybox. I think that one's more of a toss up. Uh, I don't really think it's too hungry box favored, even though I guess Cody winning is an upset. Um, but as far as these other sets, you're really seeing the mental fortitude that these like top 10, top 15 players have um, from these top eights that they're so familiar with. And it seems that they're 
able to edge out uh, some of their up and comer up and comer opponents like Bobby Big Walls and Spark and Toussaint. Yeah, exactly. The veterans thriving right now, except of course that one notable exception of Hungry Box going down early. So um, the last set of our block is about to come up, but I think we're going to see some Red Bull replays real quick. Um, either way, the last set uh, before we switch into top four is going to be Spark versus S Fat. So uh, formerly NorCal versus NorCal matchup. And are we going into a Red Bull replay? I, I honestly just made the hard read. You know, production didn't say anything. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm taking the gobble. Okay. Yeah, I expected us to. <laughs> yeah, that was the preemptive back air I was talking about. Um, Cody might have just learned that from the previous set, which, like I said, I didn't watch. But um, Bobby gets a little too predictable with those. And so uh, Cody probably took notes. And, uh, you know, he was able to close out this set in a convincing fashion. Oh, man, this was great to watch. Just like a fairly competitive, you know, despite a 3-0. Nice spacey ditto, always good for the eyes. And IBDW rep in Tri-State, of course, love to see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure uh, Bobby, you know, can't be happy about the way that this top eight went for